video, I'm going to go through how I made this Thundercat. His name is Tento the Thundercat. Um, so I'll go through the whole process. He has glass eyes, a resin head, uh, body's soft, and a wire armature. So um, he is fully poseable, she. Um, so if you want to know how I made it, stay tuned and I'll go through the process. Alright, so I'm starting off with a resin cast that I have sculpted, moulded in silicon and then cast in resin. And I actually cast these glass eyes inside of the head. So if you're after that tutorial, I have a bunch of paid tutorials in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. Uh, I have five of them. Uh, one of them uh, is the um, casting glass eyes inside resin and I have more basic ones that are just resin casting and silicon moulding, really simple things. Uh, so you can head there if you're interested with in how I um, cast the glass eyes in it. So what I'm doing now is just painting up the bits that need to be, um, that are sort of visible out outside of the fur that I apply to the face. So I'm using a water-based acrylic paint called Chromacryl um, and it is a, an Australian brand um, but you can use any acrylic paint that you have handy, you don't have to get anything fancy so in your local craft store it should have something very similar to this what I use. So I put a couple of layers on, uh, usually after I've applied the fur to the face. Um, so I just put a basic layer on first and there's no need to be too neat either because we're going to be covering it with fur anyway. So the same deal with the pores. So again, I have sculpted this, molded it in silicon and cast in resin. So I'm just going to go ahead and really roughly paint in the pore pads. So again, this is going to be covered with faux fur. So there's no point being too particular about the paint job. And this is the faux fur that I'm going to be using. It is a pretty medium thickness pile. Uh, it's got a long length to it and it is grey underneath with black tips on the back. I have a ton of this fur in stock so I'll probably be seeing it um, more in the future. So I've laid out my patterns. So these patterns I've created myself. I'm not a pattern whiz so um, there's a lot of experimenting that went on and I'm still not 100% um, happy with them but it works for me, uh, so I'm trying different things to see um, how bodies turn out. And as with all of my dolls that I create, I have a little backstory. So this is Tentor's the Thundercats backstory. Thundercats are intense creatures. They emit a crackling sound when they walk that sounds like thunder. Because of this, they are feared throughout the lands. They tend to have a bad temper if disturbed and will attack on sight. These cats have a unique pattern on individuals coats, much like our own fingerprint. They can range from blues, yellows and oranges with markings in black. Thundercats can be found mainly on the yellow tribal lands in Cry India, but have been seen roaming in almost all regions. So that's their little backstory. So once that's all done, I sew it up on the sewing machine, um, leaving the back end and the front head end and the legs open so I can turn it inside out easily. I have been hand sewing things a bit more lately, but with this particular doll, um, I know how this body works, so it works for me to sew up most as I can um, on the sewing machine. And I find the sewing machine to be a lot stronger than just hand sewing things as well, um, which is a bonus when you're posing these little critters. Um, so yeah, once I've done that, this is what we have after I've pulled it the right way around. So it's kind of just like a fluffy body that doesn't really look like anything at the moment so we'll need some trimming and um, we'll need some stuffing as well to fill out the form and once I've done that I make my armature I use either a wire or a ball and socket armature with this particular doll I used a ball and socket armature but I do have a wire armature tutorial in my shop as well if you're interested in that uh, at, at creaturesofnat.com again and with the tail, I actually sew it up by hand just because it's too small to actually fit in the sewing machine and it's too difficult to turn it the right way around. So smaller tails need to be hand sewed. I don't really like gluing things because I don't like the way the stiffness of it and you can see the seam. So I'm not really into that, but um, yeah. If you want thin tails, you're going to have to hand sew it, which it takes a bit longer, it takes a lot longer actually, <laughs> but I sew all of my pieces with a ladder stitch and I have a video on my channel on how to sew with a ladder stitch with faux fur, um, so you can check that out as well. So I know there's a lot 
of them with just like felt fabric but this one I use faux fur so you can see how how it behaves a little bit differently so uh, after I've done that and I've inserted all of the armature and attached the pieces together um, I sew up all of the pieces with a ladder stitch again and glue up the ends so I'm gluing the faux fur bits to the resin and I'm using a tacky fabric glue and this tacky fabric glue I get from a local store called Spotlight in Australia but you can find any sort of fabric glue in your local craft store as well. Um, it's not hard to find. But this one is really good. If you live in Australia, I recommend this one because it holds like a trooper. And I usually leave it to dry overnight um, just so it, it adheres to the actual resin. And once that's done, I go ahead and apply all of the fur onto the head and the feet. Um, I'm still not sure whether I'm going to include this in a tutorial form. Um, uh, still thinking about it, not sure what I'm going to do about it just yet, so I haven't included it in this video, but once I have applied all the fur, I add some details like shading and markings and stuff, so I use a paint by Jacquard, it's a fabric paint, and I've chosen to use a brush this time rather than an airbrush, uh, just because I wanted the lines to be pretty precise. Um, and I find sometimes using an airbrush on faux fur, it doesn't really work because it blows it around a bit too much. So I decided to go by hand and use a flat brush to um, apply all of the markings. I went around and applied all of these markings to the body so this is the example or the final result that I got I'm pretty happy with the way she turned out she has already found a home but um, I have a couple more dolls in my shop that's looking for home so that's also at creaturesofnat.com and that is it for me today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any video requests you can leave it in the comments down below you can also check me out on instagram and facebook at creatures of nat and i'll catch you in the next one bye